On the road to Emmaus, on that very first Easter, Jesus said to those two disciples, Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Not all the scriptures. I mean, like the New Testament wasn't even written yet. Well, that's right. Jesus fulfilled all the messianic prophecies of the Old Testament. Yeah, I don't like the Old Testament. God was like all mean and stuff. I just want to talk about Jesus. Well, that, that's that's what I mean. I mean, the Old Testament prophets talked about Jesus. <laughs> uh, hello, McFly, anybody home? Jesus wasn't even born when the Old Testament was written. Well, that's true, but the second person of the Trinity exists from all eternity, and the Old Testament prophesied about his coming, who he would be, what he would accomplish for fallen humanity, things like that. Oh. You're not going to talk about sin, are you, man? Oh, it's a real downer, you know. It's kind of hard not to. I mean, the first messianic prophecy in the scriptures is found in Genesis chapter 3, right after the fall into sin. God says to the serpent, I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. This is the first time in the Bible when God promised to send the Savior. The entire Old Testament flows from that verse and points to the coming of this Messiah. So Jesus is the Messiah, and he checked all the boxes. Yes, and, and there are hundreds of Messianic prophecies in the Old Testament concerning the Messiah. The probability of one person fulfilling just 48 of the prophecies found in the Old Testament would be 1 in 10, followed by 157 zeros. It would look something like that. That's an incredibly large number that far exceeds the number of atoms in the observable universe. Oh, my brain. I can't even. Ugh. So the Old Testament prophesies that the Messiah would, for example, be born of a virgin, be born in Bethlehem, live a sinless life, preach the good news, heal the blind, the deaf, and the lame, enter into Jerusalem riding on a donkey, be betrayed by a friend for 30 pieces of silver, remain silent before his accusers, be crucified with sinners, have his side pierced, be buried in a rich man's tomb, and ultimately also that he would rise from the grave. I noticed, like, I mean, your mouth didn't say it, but, like, the words on the screen talked about Isaiah 53 a lot. So, like, what's that all about? So, Isaiah 53 was written 700 years before Christ's crucifixion. And remarkably, it describes crucifixion very very vividly, even before crucifixion was invented. In verses 5 and 6, it prophesies that the Messiah was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquity. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Sin again? Uh, yes, that's what the Bible's all about. We learn even in the Old Testament that Christ came to sacrifice himself for us and for our salvation. And we trust the Old Testament to be God's word because when Christ came during his ministry, he confirmed that this word of the Old Testament was true. He upheld it as God's word. It's reliable. It's true. It's something that we should, as Christians, believe in. The entire Bible, both Old and New Testament, are centered around the Messiah, the Son of God, Jesus of Nazareth. I mean, my brain still hurts, but I'm pretty sure this is good. It is good. And as God the Father said at the baptism of Christ and also at his transfiguration, this is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him.